with a, a young man that started with me four years ago by the name of Tom Douglish, it's important that you you keep opportunity open. It's important that you invite people in. It's important that you keep your eyes open as to the people that you're working with and who is around you. And this young man has been with me for the last, I believe, four to five years as an apprenticeship uh, and learning as a farrier. And we have a whole program that does that. And he's actually doing extremely well. He's now bought his first home and uh, has, a, has a nice business. He's still with me three days a week. And uh, he, he's just doing extremely well. We started a, a program because in Ontario, Canada, there is not a lot of farrier opportunity. And I think that if you would like to go to a farrier school, that, that you should really do that. Um, that you should get some intense training, so on and so forth. We started a different spin called the Central Ontario Farrier Apprenticeship Program. And the idea is we offer a three month program to teach somebody how to be an apprentice. How to contact a farrier, how to, everything from where to stand, to how to sweep the floor, to how to work a grinder, um, how to set up a farrier truck, the importance of products, the importance of the supplies from those products, what sets a farrier up to have a successful day. And that's just our different spin from our area. But this young man, Tom, joined in 50% with me with that, and that is something that we're driving forward. To go about finding a mentor, it's a tough job. The American Association of Professional Farriers has set up a mentor-mentee program, and I'm hoping that that program takes off in the right direction. So often, and even today, our young people that start in the industry are alone. There is not many helping hands that bring them in. And there needs to be something that does. There needs to be that guidance. At the end of the day, nobody's protecting the horse owner. You can start today in North America and print a business card tomorrow and call yourself a farrier. And I think that's wrong. With trying to find a mentor, you need to know your area. You need to understand your industry. You need to know people's reputations. Certainly, if a young person was to come to something like the International Hoof Care Summit, even though that that is based around trying to educate a lot of farriers as to what is the proper way of farrier, but trying to provide a well-rounded education, what you will find is a lot of farriers of like-minded. What I mean by that is they're all here for the same reason. And a lot of times you'll find a lot of good people that are here for the betterment of the team, the betterment of the industry, and the betterment of their profession. And they're not here thinking about themselves, or having said that, they're not here individually. You want to find somebody that will promote you, will help you, will guide you. If you're going to sit down and establish a relationship, don't just jump in with both feet. Sit down and talk about it. Try to establish perhaps a memorandum of understanding, a contract, any one of those things that clearly states how you're going to operate. It's important as a young farrier that you understand what is expected of you. And so often do young farriers get thrown under the bus because they don't understand, because they don't know what's clear, they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And for farriers, by and large, it is a lot easier just to grab a foot and do it yourself. It is a lot more complicated to stand back and try to explain to somebody what it is that you want. Because of the artistic impression involved in farriery, it is very, very difficult to pass that on because it becomes all very individualized. So mentor, mentees, as we would call them, apprentices, associates, people looking to get into the industry, do your research. The internet is a wonderful place to find information, look for schools, look for other people to do ride-alongs with. One of the best things that you can do is if you're thinking about being a farrier, is grab a ride-along, test it out, do a day with somebody, do two days with somebody. If you think that you want to go work with somebody, and they're offering you an apprenticeship or a working spot, ride with them first. Try to figure out if you're going to fit into their environment. At the same time, it is very important for the mentor farrier 
to know that you're going to fit in their environment as well. You have to set that up for success. If you don't, you will fail. And unfortunately in our industry, the hard truth is, failures fail at apprenticeships time and time again. There are only a small percentage of farriers out there. When you talk about 30,000 farriers in the United States, there is still only a small percentage of farriers that successfully have apprentices or associates. And what I mean by that is a successful apprenticeship is an apprenticeship that guides you to being a successful farrier.